Good afternoon, everyone. Um, somebody suggested I was dressed a little casually, but uh, I was actually an hour ago, I was in t-shirt, shorts, and flip-flops, so I think I've kind of dressed up for this. And I, I wish I could say I was happy to be here, and if any mining company CEO says they are happy to be here, I would walk right by their booth if I were you, because they're lying through their teeth. Um, this is the, I think, the second nice day we've had in Vancouver in nine months, by my recollection. And I think last weekend was nice, but I was up in the Yukon and it was miserable there. So uh, anyway, I'd, I'd far rather be out in the garden uh, sitting on the deck with a gin and tonic right now. And I will be there in about an hour and a half. Anyway, on to Victoria. Forward-looking statement. Everybody's seen those. Um, I think what really separates us uh, from many of the companies here is that uh, we have a fully permitted asset in a safe jurisdiction that in production will produce over 200,000 ounces per year. Now I don't think you can name any other project out there that meets that metric. Very unique uh, company and a very unique project. Uh, three large shareholders, Sun Valley Gold is our largest shareholder. Interestingly, they've uh, purchased most of their position in the market over the past six years. Uh, Electrum, on the other hand, became a shareholder just about exactly a year ago now. They did about six months of due diligence on Victoria and the Eagle project and approached us a year ago and said we'd like to make a private placement. After a couple of weeks of uh, negotiating, we did reach an agreement with them and they invested 18 million in Victoria. Uh, later in the year, in August of last year, they also participated in a bot deal financing. So they're right around 15%. Feasibility study highlights. Uh, you can see the reserve there and I emphasize reserve. Um, I'm appalled at uh, a number of resource calculations I see out there these days. So this is a very solid number. The deposit has been drilled off on 25 meter centers and the first three years of production have been drilled off at 12 and a half meter centers. It will be a very large mine at uh, over 12 million tons of ore per year. Um, what really makes this property work is the strip ratio at less than one to one. Um, capital cost, uh, and I'm going to talk in US dollars, uh, just under 300 million. Um, cash cost per ounce, less than 550. Um, and all in sustaining costs, less than 650. So in the lower quartile in terms of uh, costs. You can see the economics there. At 1250 gold and a 78 cent Canadian dollar, the NPV is well over 500 million, and the IRR is just under 30 percent. Now I talked about Sun Valley and Electrum being large shareholders. The reason their own Victoria is in that box in the top right there. They're gold bulls. They think gold is going to $2,000 in the short term and. $20,000 in the long term. So you can see what happens even at 2,000. The NPV goes to well over a billion and the RRR to over 50%. Um, now I'm going to show a quick animation that uh, tells you a little more about the project and then I'll uh, speak again. It takes about five minutes it's, uh, and does a much better job than I can do. Victoria Gold's Eagle Gold Project is a proposed, fully permitted, in-valley heap gold project to be the largest gold mine in Yukon history. The Eagle Gold Project is located in central Yukon, which is recognized as a safe mining jurisdiction. The deposit lies within the Tintina Gold Belt and is located approximately 85 kilometers by road north-northeast from the village of Mayo and about 400 kilometers north of the capital city of Whitehorse. The project is well supported by local infrastructure, including an existing construction camp, 
an all-weather access road, is near grid power and an airstrip 40 kilometers to the south. The Eagle Gold project is fully permitted. The feasibility study and environmental assessment process are complete. All major permits are in hand and a comprehensive cooperation benefits agreement with the First Nation of the Nacho Nayak Dun is in place. Initial construction and pre-stripping costs are estimated at $288 million. Construction of the mine will take approximately one year. During operations, the mine will be a significant economic contributor to the Yukon, employing 350 to 400 people. The Eagle Gold Resource runs in an east-west direction for over 1,050 meters and to a depth of 475 meters. Combined proven and probable reserve totals 2.7 million ounces of gold. The mineralization of the deposit is open along strike and at depth. The proposed Eagle Gold mine is a technically straightforward, low-cost, open pit mine with a three-stage crush, in-valley heap, and gold recovery plan with a 10 plus year mine life. When complete, the open pit will be 1300 meters long by 440 meters wide and a depth of 475 meters. In the open pit following blasting, rock not hosting gold will be hauled to a waste rock storage facility. Run of mine ore will be hauled to the primary heap facility by taking advantage of trucking run of ore mine to the primary heap facility, the strip ratio is 0.8 to 1. Higher grade gold bearing ore is hauled to the primary crusher and then conveyed onward to the secondary and tertiary crushers. Once crushed to approximately 6.5 millimeters, the gold bearing ore is conveyed to the primary heap facility that has a double line pad installed to contain the gold bearing solution. The primary heap facility will be constructed in three phases, starting from the lower portion of the valley and progressing upwards. The primary heap facility is comprised of a solution sump, piping, leak detection and recovery, and monitoring systems. Mobile stackers will stack the crushed ore in 10 meter lifts, with solution emitters installed approximately 1 meter beneath the surface for frost protection. Gravity draws the solution downwards as it releases and absorbs the gold. The pregnant or gold-bearing solution collects into wells and is pumped to the gold recovery plant. In the gold recovery plant, the gold is removed from the solution, smelted, and poured into dore bars. The solution, which no longer contains gold, is recycled and pumped back to the primary heap facility to repeat the process. Over the 10-year life of mine, the Eagle Mine will produce 1.7 million ounces of gold at an average of approximately 200,000 ounces per year. The project's economics are robust and will generate an after-tax net present value of approximately $508 million with a capital payback period of 2.8 years. Mining will process 33,700 tons of ore per day equating to 12.3 million tons per year and 123 million tons over the life of the mine. Additionally, the mine plan benefits from a favorable strip ratio of 0.95 to 1. The 2016 feasibility study includes the addition of a satellite deposit, Olive, located approximately 2 kilometers from Eagle. In year 7, Crushed ore will be conveyed to the secondary heap facility near Olive. In year 9, a higher grade open pit at Olive will come into production with all olive ore to be processed on the secondary heap facility. With changing economics, there is potential to extend the mine life at Eagle for an additional 6 to 10 years. There is also potential to increase production with the expansion of the Olive Shamrock Zone. In addition to the Eagle Deposit and the Olive Shamrock Zone, the large Dublin Gulch property hosts a number of high-quality exploration targets that lie along the Potato Hills Trend, a 13 by 3 kilometer known trend of significant mineralization. Victoria Gold also holds additional claim blocks nearby, 
including on the adjacent VBW property. Victoria Gold's strong and experienced board of directors and solid management team with mind-building know-how are focused on bringing the Eagle Gold project into production. Victoria Gold trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol VIT. I think you'll agree uh, the video does a great job of explaining the company and our project. I'm just going to skip that last slide because it was covered in the video. Um, I do want to talk a little more about infrastructure. The video talked about this but uh, it's really important to point out for mine development that we actually have great infrastructure in place. Those blue lines you see on the map are paved highways, so we have a paved highway within uh, 35 kilometers of the project site. The blue lines are also the power corridor, so we have grid power within 35 kilometers. Um, the town of Mayo is about 55 kilometers to the south. It's quite a small town, but importantly it has a full service airport, so as you can see we do enjoy good infrastructure. A uh, big part of my focus these days is project financing. Uh, about two months ago we signed a uh, uh, letter of engagement with BNP, one, a very large European bank, to provide a debt facility of $220 million. Um, that work is going very well and I think we'll have a full commitment there within the next two to three weeks. Um, we have 40 million in the treasury. Again, I'm talking US dollars. So our funding construction gap is about 40 million. Um, I think every, you know, that with a market cap of 350 million, that is very doable. And I think you'll see us move forward with a, a fully financed solution over the next few months. Um, current schedule. Uh, you know, we're going to start doing some construction this year, but our real focus right now is exploration. Um, the video talked about all of Shamrock. We currently have two drills running there, and we have two drills drilling other targets on the Potato Hills trend. So you're going to see, start to see a lot of news flow coming out of Victoria over the next two months. Um, this just breaks down the... Uh, um, the exploration, we actually do have that airborne unit on site right now, so we're in flying the entire uh, claim block, including the VD VBW block with uh, airborne. Um, just a second on officers and directors. Uh, in the back there is Tony George. Uh, Tony recently joined us and is uh, We'll be at our booth a little bit more this afternoon, but Tony's brought a wealth of experience in terms of mind building to the team. Uh, we worked together at De Beers. He was building the Victor mine when I was uh, building the Snap Lake Diamond mine. He's gone on to build other mines since then and uh, is a great addition to our team. On the board side, I'm honored uh, every time we have a board meeting at the quality of people uh, I have on the board and uh, we believe me this is no old boys club these guys put me through my paces on a monthly basis um, you know particularly Sean Harvey he's been with me since the beginning um, just a brilliant man understands mining and capital markets uh, Len Kroll and Mike McGinnis are both very seasoned explorationists um, Chris Hill is a very experienced uh, financial guy and then recently joining the board are Heather White and Patrick Downey. Now I think everybody if you follow Junior Mining know Patrick Downey he just became the CEO of Orzone uh, but he's also an interesting guy because he's, ex he's a metallurgist 
very strong technically, but he also has a very good knowledge of capital markets, so I rely on him uh, a lot as well. Heather White, people don't know very well. Um, she's a very experienced mining engineer, um, has built and operated numerous mines in the north, so we'll really be leaning on her as we move uh, forward with the development of Eagle. Um, if any of you were in Brent Cook's uh, presentation uh, earlier today, he, he puts up a slide like this. Uh, you know, Brent's a very practical geolo economic geologist, and he doesn't like to hear just grade. He likes the metric we show at the bottom here that looks at um, recovered grade per ton of material moved, so that you're taking into account grade recovery and strip ratio. Um, my chairman Sean Harvey has called this the McConnell index and I was embarrassed recently when uh, at another one of these forums uh, somebody in the audience asked where the project this co other company's project fit in the McConnell index so I think I might have to remove that. Um, this is just uh, NPV uh, uh, as a percentage of initial capital. It's a metric I use personally when I'm looking at companies. It's just a quick test. If uh, it's less than 100%, I'm not interested because, as we all know, shit happens in mining and one little thing goes wrong, the banks own the property and the company's bankrupt. So I look for the uh, NPV as a percent of initial capital to be well over a hundred percent. I won't go into the Pete and Avs. I see I'm running out of time here and I think the timekeeper actually started the clock late, so. Um, yeah, you know, I talked about strip ratio, very important, but the other important thing is being in Canada. You can see uh, three years ago the Canada-US exchange rates uh, started to separate and we now have uh, really a 10-year high in gold price in terms of Canadian dollar. Makes a huge difference if you're operating a mine in Canada. Uh, analyst coverage, we enjoy great coverage. Uh, you know, uh, six analysts cover the stock. I think the average target price is over a dollar. So uh, if you don't believe my BS, maybe you'll believe their BS. Why invest in Victoria? Uh, I don't need to go through this summary. Um, I'll just let you read it. I'll be at our booth just back here for another hour and then I'll be on my deck. Uh.